There are these four hormones listed there at the beginning of the chapter, <clears throat> right? And today we're going to be looking into this interaction of hormones, homeostasis, uh, metabolic balance, and reproduction, especially in humans, for them to partly develop layers of memory, but also to learn from each other and uh, stimulate each other's thoughts. And for the first round, you're going to write down your names and then everything you can remember from what you're studying about that. And then after five or so minutes of that, you will pass it. And the next group is going to add whatever they can think of. And we'll do that until it comes around and then it'll come back to you at the end. Write down everything you know, books closed. You can all be writing at the same time. Like a full day of like 24 hours. Well, because we like sleep for over half of the day. Oh, yeah. The plus one routine allows students to offer what they have. Then when that offering goes to the next group, it may stimulate knowledge and understanding for that. And they go, oh, but I also have the. You can say out loud what you're writing and thinking. No. That would be See, helpful. That would be great. So, it, it helps, but we actually have it in our body already. It's a group the thyroid gland. Therefore, I think it does control sweat and the like, excretion of substances. Uh, because that's what it does to regulate body temperature. We're going to rotate them the way the planets go around the sun. <laughs> As you pass it, what are we doing? We're adding one thing at least, preferably per person, but at least as a group, right, so that we're building your knowledge. So you're, you're learning from what other people have done, but then you're bringing it out of your own mind and you're adding one thing or more than one thing. <laughs> It does have to do with your thyroid, which has to do with thyroxine. When I was reading, it talked about the hypothyroidism. Okay. So. Another half a minute, and we'll rotate again. Metabolic rate. Is that metabolism? But it's really, it can also be really dangerous because it uses up all of the sugar in your cell. And if you don't get sugar on board, it would be like really slow. So it can cause like. Is I'm listening for students saying, well, isn't that such and so to such and so, where they're one's jumping on off of the other, so that it's not just a recitation of any kind, that there's an interaction and sparks are going off. Oh, I'll just say one mouse to one more thing. Maybe two of Okay, another half a minute and we'll shift. As I step into routines, I often don't explicitly name uh, uh, what we're going to do. Uh, hardly any of us hear or learn what we're supposed to do with one round. So I give them the big picture and then here's our first step. And then, okay, as you finish that, here's the second step. I find that the students can get into the the, the patterning and the flexibility of the thinking and not m trying to match uh, a template. While you're doing that, you're hopefully putting more of this into your memory. Pictures are okay, but if they contribute to the message. Wait, let's read it. Uh, the body becomes unresponsive to the amount of blood sugar. Thoughts? So that probably means there's too much. You just sit down. This is the first time I've done the plus one routine with this class. This is the second year with them, and so they've done a number of routines. And so I knew that they would immediately fall into the rhythm. Right now, take a moment, the original, to see what has been done with your start. Right? We're building our knowledge. Is that one only sleeping for me? I don't have to be I'm sure there's others. Is there anything like that stood out to you from that exercise about either the one you started with or a different one? I just thought it was interesting that like with insulin and also with left memory, there's a certain point 
that like your body becomes unresponsive to um, like when it's outside of the threshold. Thank you. Sadie. Question, how adjustable our circadian rhythms are um, because uh, jet lag was brought up on our paper and how like melatonin levels are supposed to kind of stay structured in a 24 hour cycle. So when we're in a different time zone, when we're sleeping at completely different times, how quickly do our melatonin levels adjust to that? We can look into that. <laughs> that went pretty well <laughs> because they just. They, they jumped right in, they, they talked to each other. I'm looking for that kind of lively conversation where one student says something and say, yeah, and you know what I heard? So that went very nicely. One of the things I, I noticed that was really wonderful is the students would pause, listen to each other, allow everyone in the group to speak, encourage those who weren't speaking. So another benefit of the plus one protocol is that the, the students, uh, have another source of notes, right? There's a, they are interacting in the moment, but then uh, I'm gonna make copies and they, the student will have this available to them. Mm -hmm.